Last bit of belly fat not going away. What I'm about to show you changed everything. Six months of work, 30 pounds gone, three belt notches tighter, yet that stubborn fat still bloody there. Three years ago, I stood where you are, leaning clothes but hiding at the beach. I've helped 180 plus men solve this exact problem. Not with another eat less, move more lecture, but with four precise fixes that work when everything else fails. I have four coaching spots open this week for men who'd rather skip the trial and error, link below. First fix, stop attacking your calories like they owe you money. At 33, after three weeks stuck, I slashed calories from 2,200 to 1,600 overnight. Brilliant plan. About as brilliant as performing surgery with a butter knife. Two weeks later, belly fat unchanged. Energy of a sloth. Personality of a politician. When you cut calories too drastically, your body fights back. You move around 20% less throughout the day and your smaller body already needs fewer calories. That 500 calorie cut might only be a 100 calorie real deficit with 10 times the suffering. The solution isn't more extreme, it's more precise. Like switching from a sledgehammer to a scalpel, small cuts of just 100 to 200 calories, just enough to progress without triggering panic. First, confirm you're truly plateaued. No weight change for 14 plus days. No changes in photos or measurements, tracking at least 90% of your food. If you can say yes to all of those, do this now. Cut calories by just five to 10%. Most people should not go below 10 calories per pound of body weight. Wait 14 full days before making any more changes. Mark was stuck at 192 pounds for three weeks, about to drop to 1,500 calories. Instead, we cut just 150 calories daily. 10 days later, the scale moved and his deadlift went up 20 pounds, the opposite of dramatic cuts. That last bit of belly fat needs a scalpel, not a chainsaw. But what if your calories are spot on and you're still stuck? That brings us to fix two. My metabolism must be broken. That's what Tom told me after three months of perfect tracking. He'd bet his house that he was eating exactly 1,800 calories daily. Our CSI kitchen audit found the truth. 2,700 actual calories, 900 phantom calories every single day. And he wasn't lying. He genuinely believed he was doing everything right. Studies show people report 47% fewer calories than they actually eat. Even experienced dieters make these mistakes. The invisible saboteurs. That just a drizzle of olive oil, 120 to 180 hidden calories. Weekend meals eyeballed, not weighed. Quick tastes while you're cooking. Portion creep with familiar foods where your tablespoon of peanut butter could sink a cruise ship. For the first 30 pounds, these mistakes don't matter much. For the last bit of belly fat, they're lethal. Here's what I want you to do next. Create a compliance grid. Mark every meal X on plan, zero missed, or star off plan. Weigh all fats and oils. They're impossible to guess correctly. Use the police interview technique. Ask yourself, am I tracking differently on weekends? Tracking tomorrow's food today. This stops those 9 p.m. I deserve this decisions. Richard hit a six week wall after losing 35 pounds. His compliance grid revealed that he was only 76% on track, not the 95% he believed. After fixing these blind spots, he lost five pounds of stubborn belly fat in one month. The most perfect plan means nothing with imperfect execution. But what if your tracking is perfect and you're still stuck? That's when we look at what's happening between workouts. Several years back from my beach holiday, I made the classic cardio mistake. I added 15 minutes of all out sprints daily while my step count plummeted. The result, fat loss reversed completely, more cardio, worse physique, 
knees like breakfast cereal. Research explains why. Intense cardio triggers compensation. You burn 600 calories on a treadmill, then your body saves 500 by making you move less for the next 23 hours. It's like filling a bathtub while someone's opening the drain. The harder you run, the wider they open it. Instead, here's a three-step plan that works. Phase one, step foundation. Get eight to 10,000 steps daily before adding formal cardio. These steps don't trigger compensation. Phase two, post-workout mini cardio sessions. Add 10 to 15 minutes after weights, Stairmaster, incline treadmill, cycling or rowing. Phase three, recovery friendly, steady state cardio. Add 30 to 40 minute sessions at conversational pace. Crucial for men over 30 whose joints hate sprints. Do this right away. Add one to 2,000 steps in every one to two weeks until you hit 10,000 plus daily. If you're still stuck, add two to three steady state cardio sessions weekly. Keep intensity at a five or six out of 10. You should be able to talk. Keep cardio and strength training workouts six plus hours apart. Rob, 52, had been doing 45 to 60 minutes of intense cardio daily for months with zero results. We cut his cardio in half, raised his steps to 12,000 and added two 35 minute steady state sessions weekly. Within three weeks, his stubborn belly fat began visibly shrinking. The key isn't more cardio, it's smarter cardio your body doesn't sabotage. But what if your cardio is perfect and you're still stuck? That's when we look at what the fitness industry has been pushing that might actually be holding you back. Take a diet break to reset your metabolism. Ah yes, the fitness industry's miracle cure. Two weeks at maintenance calories to supposedly supercharge your fat loss. About as effective as expecting a vacation to magically make you better at your job. A 2023 study showed that for people who lift weights, these diet breaks gave zero benefits for body composition, metabolism, or adherence, none. I learned this the hard way. After 16 weeks of dieting for a photo shoot, I took a two week reset break. Instead, I lost all momentum, nearly quit, and felt like I was starting from scratch. That deadline, it just got two weeks closer. For most men over 30 who lift weights, steady fat loss at 0.5 to 1% Weekly works better than this start-stop approach. But diet breaks do help in one scenario. When you're striving for 10 to 15% body fat with severe hunger, bad sleep, or dropping strength, a seven, I would say more seven to 14 day break helps mentally while preventing breakdown. It's a tactical pause, not a metabolism miracle. If you must take a break, first track everything perfectly for two weeks. Most need for breaks comes from tracking problems. Use maintenance calories, focus on increasing carbs, keep protein at 0.8 to 1.2 grams per pound of your body weight. Expect two to four pounds of water weight gain at first. Some argue, this is a better option. Refeed days, 20 to 30% more calories, one to two days weekly, mainly from carbs. Michael came to me at wit's end, 12 weeks in, energy bottomed out, progress stalled. Instead of a full break, we used two strategic refeed days weekly. His plateau broke, training improved, fat loss accelerated, and he reached his goal without a two week delay that could have sent him MIA. Don't pause progress when strategic adjustments work better. But what if age is your real problem? Let's tackle the biggest myth holding you back. It's impossible to lose belly fat after 30. I hear this every day from men who have surrendered to their belly because of birthdays. This myth is robbing you of the body you deserve. Research demolishes this excuse. Metabolism only drops 0.7 per year after the age of 60. Between 20 and 60, practically identical. Your metabolism at 40 is essentially the same as it is at 25, assuming you've maintained muscle and activity. 
I recently worked with two clients, Adam, 27, and Richard, 52. Richard lost twice the amount of belly fat in the same 12 weeks. Why? Age gave him one advantage, discipline. While Adam was at the bar Friday night, Richard was prepping meals for the week. What changes as we age isn't biology, it's behavior. We move less, we eat randomly, we sleep worse, stress rises. It's not your metabolism slowing, it's your lifestyle changing. My best results consistently men in their 40s and 50s with military precision, not 20 somethings who think they can outrun fast food and beer. What makes belly fat stubborn is genetics and fat cell types, not your birthday. When your body stores fat is 70% genetic, these patterns don't suddenly change when you turn 30, 40, or 50. Your age isn't your obstacle, your approach is. So in this video, I went over four proven fixes for stubborn belly fat. Small five to 10% calorie cuts, never dramatic drops. Track everything to eliminate blind spots. Build step count before adding strategic cardio. Use refeed days instead of long breaks. You have a choice. Spend another year piecing together advice from influencers who've never helped a man over 35 get lean. Or work with someone who's solved this problem hundreds of times. I have four coaching spots open. They'll be filled within 72 hours. They always are. This isn't for everyone. I want men who are already motivated but need the precise roadmap. My clients don't just get leaner, they get back what matters. They stop hiding at the beach. They reconnect with their partners. They set the example for their kids. They finally see the man they've worked hard to become. If that's what you want, apply it below. If not, use these four strategies yourself and transform anyway. Hit subscribe and watch my video here to make sure you actually have abs when your belly fat is gone. See you in the next one.